Welcome to this edition of Stay at Home Connect. I'm Phyllis Jackson. While promoting his COVID-19 relief plan, President Biden says that 600 million doses of the coronavirus vaccine will be available by the end of July. FEMA launches the opening of its first COVID-19 vaccination sites in Los Angeles and Oakland as part of the Biden administration's plan to pick up the pace of vaccine distribution. The winter weather is hindering vaccination efforts in many states, including here in Georgia. In a release, the Georgia Department of Public Health says it received notice from the CDC that Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that should have arrived earlier this week were held back by the manufacturers due to the weather. Delays are expected to continue through the week. Many providers are rescheduling appointments. Officials with the Department of Public Health are asking for patience as they wait for weather conditions to improve and shipments to resume. Doctors are concerned about an increase of an extremely rare multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children after exposure to COVID-19. The condition leads to inflammation of the body's major organs. Here's what you need to know. The CDC has a list of symptoms that you should be aware of. Not all children will have the same symptoms. Among the more serious, troubled breathing, chest pain, or pressure that doesn't go away, along with severe abdominal pain. For a full list of symptoms of multi-system inflammatory syndrome, you can go to the CDC's website at cdc.gov. That's a wrap. We'll see you on the next edition of Stay at Home Connect.
right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Madeline Archibong, and this is the May 9th, 2021 Committee of the City Utilities for the City of Atlanta. Um, the first order of business is to call this meeting to order, and then next, the introduction of the members. I'll ask our analyst, Mr. Evans, to um, conduct a roll call, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone. Council Member Andrea L. Boone. Present. Council Member Dustin Hillis. Here. Council Member J.P. Matsukite. Here. Council Member Joyce Shepard. Present. Council Member Howard Shook. Aye. And Council Member Winslow. I believe she's still absent. Uh, quorum is present, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Does anyone need to voice vote today? All right, next, Mr. Evans, please read the remote meeting statement. This City Utilities Committee is being conducted remotely as advertised and as in accordance with OCGA 50-14-1. The meeting will be conducted in conformance with Robert's Rules of Order and the Rules of Council as authorized by City Code. The public may access the meeting by dialing 877-579-6743, conference ID 831-599-1256, which was noted on the Friday, March 5th public meeting notice. The public may also view the meeting on Channel 26, the Council's homepage at citycouncil.atc.com citycouncil.atlantaga.gov, the council's YouTube channel, or the council's Facebook and Twitter pages via at ATL Council. All presentations are available on the Atlanta City Council City Utilities Committee presentation page. The agenda was published and made available Friday, March 5th via atlantacityga.iqm2.com. Additionally, the public was able to submit comments via voicemail at 404-330 6057 between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. the day before this meeting. These comments will be played during the public comment portion of the meeting. All persons present on the remote council meeting conference bridge are requested to mute your phones and speakers. Additionally, speakers must be acknowledged by the presiding officer prior to speaking. Each council member is requested to open your Outlook email and minimize the screen. Amendments, substitutes, and informational documents have been distributed to the committee members beforehand. Thank you all in advance for your cooperation. All right, thank you very much for uh, reading that statement. The next item is the adoption of the agenda. This will be an electronic vote. I will entertain a motion for the adoption of the agenda. So moved, Matt okay. I'll second that. Thank you. If there's no discussion, please open the vote. The vote is open. And the vote is closed. It's six yeas and zero nays. All right. The agenda has been adopted. Next, a uh, motion for the approval of the minutes, please. So moved, Matt Scott. Okay. I'll second that. If there's no unreadiness, please open the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed at six yeas and zero nays. All right, thank you. The amendments have been approved. Next, we do have public comment. Ms. Evans, please uh, play the comment. Your host has joined. Um, um, the call was ended, and then it asked.
One moment, Madam Chair. Staff is preparing, preparing the comments now. Your host has joined. Directors. 
Each of those cable TV vacancies need to be filled with community conscious, grassroots minded citizens who believe in public television and who can help ensure that notices of cable TV board meetings get out to the public in accordance with the Special Open Meetings Act. This committee can help by saying to it that notices of meetings of city boards are posted in the public notices section on the city's website. While you're saying to it, committee, that these vacant slots are filled, People TV can again help producers bring attention to the modus operandi of the NQR9 by revitalizing projects like ATAM Rundown and like NPU on TV. The public still needs to know how and why it is that the NQR9 in monthly meetings attended by voting members fewer than one tenth of one percent of the 20,000 residents stakeholders of NPUR can control so many lives with so many city officials looking on. I urge you to shape up a ship out and the UR9, Vice Chair Anthony Robinson, Carlos Blair, Ricardo Jacobs, Renetta L. Scott, Albert White, Allison Hathaway, Sherry Williams, and your NPUR9 enablers and supporters. Shape up the ship out, please. you? This is uh, Jack Siebert. I'm a uh, 30-year resident of Atlanta and a uh, Vietnam veteran on a fixed income living in Midtown. I'm uh, very, very excited and pleased to see all of the effort being placed on affordable housing. I think it's very important. I am disturbed, though, because I see that at the same time that city is trying to make housing affordable. They allow the Public Works Department to put fees on those affordable houses, fees for services not performed. That's the solid waste fee that is being charged to rental homes, all businesses. It's a fee that is not for any services that are performed by the city. That seems appalling to me. Does the city, on one hand, do great things for affordable housing, then turn around and put a fee on top of it? Once a year, they're charging anywhere from 100 to $400 for services not performed, solid waste fees. City council needs to take action to stop this and stop it now. Thank you. That concludes the public comment. All right, thank you very much. Um, I do um, agree that we need to look at the vacancies that are currently outstanding on People TV. I just checked there's a vacancy that includes District 5, 6, 7, 8, and Post 2. So um, we do need to populate these boards where we can. Um, Mr. Um, Evans, let's move on to our regular section of the agenda, section D, ordinances for second reading, please. Item number one, 2100113, an ordinance by City Utilities Committee amending ordinance 17031387 in accordance with section 2-1163, subsection C, remedies after the award, article 10, procurement and real estate code of the city of Atlanta code of ordinances to amend the terms of a nutrient recovery system operation and maintenance maintenance services agreement and a fertilizer offtake agreement with Ostera USA LLC on behalf of the Department of Watershed Management for a term of five years with retroactive effective effect from February 29, 2020 through February 28, 2025 with three five-year renewal options to be exercised at the discretion of the city in an amount for the operation and maintenance agreement of $293,000.00 annually and should not exceed $1,465,000.00 over the initial term with funding for three years through with excuse me with funding for years three through five to be subject to and expressly contingent upon the adoption and approval of budgets for the fiscal years 2022 through 2024 
to ratify all services rendered from February 29 to 20 and for other purposes. Fletcher, Quentin Fletcher on the line. Good morning, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Quentin Fletcher, Department of Watershed Management. The purpose of this legislation is to change the initial terms of both the operation and maintenance agreement and the offtake agreement from 10 years to five years and to increase the number of renewal options from two to three. In 2017, council passed legislation authorizing Ostera um, US, USA LLC to design and build a nutrient hiring system at the RM Clayton WRC under contract FC-10043. The project reached completion on February 28, 2020. This legislation is also to obtain authorization to pay Ostera USA LLC for the first two years of the operation and maintenance service agreement in the amount of 293,000 annually from February 29, 2020 to February 28, 2022. All right, thank you. Colleagues, any uh, questions for Mr. Fletcher? Now I'll entertain a motion. Thank you. Thank I'll second. Her. Who was that? Hello. All right. Seconded by Mr. Hillis. Moved by Mr. Shook. There's no one readiness. Please open the vote. The vote is open. And the vote is closed at six yeas and zero nays. All right. Thank you. That stands approved. Next. We're to Thank section you, eight. Uh, you're welcome, Fletcher. All right, Mr. Evans, resolution. Item number two, 21R3214, a resolution by council member Andrea L. Boone authorizing the mayor or her designee to execute an agreement for mm -hmm. the contract listed yard debris processing, hauling, and diversion program with Tag Binding Services, Inc. on behalf of the Department of Public Works for an initial term of three years with two one-year renewal options in an amount not to exceed $888,000.00 annually, all contracted work to be charged to and paid from the fund department organization and account numbers listed herein and for other purposes. The committee members will find an amendment in their packet that will attach an IPRO report and adjust the account strings in the bill, in the paper. I was about to say, do we want to do that first or hear from uh, Carla Lipscomb? Um, why don't we uh, move the amendment uh, to attach the IPRO uh, and to adjust the account string? I make that motion. Yeah, I should will second. Thank you. If there's no one ready, let's please let's open that vote. The vote is open. It's six yeas and zero nays. All right, the amendment now is before us. The paper is amended. Carla Lipscomb, are you on the line? Good morning, council members. This is Carla Lipscomb with the Department of Public Works. Good morning. This legislation is to clarify, this amendment is to clarify the funding stream by department. Um, this solicitation went out for yard debris processing and hauling. Um, it's to process approximately 25,000 tons of residential yard debris, trees, and brush from other departments, such as parks at the Department of Watershed Management. Um, this material is reused at different power plants and paper plants throughout Georgia and Alabama. This contract was awarded to tag grinding for a term of three years with two one-year renewals, plus one responsive submittal, 
and the price per ton is currently the same at $34 per ton. Okay. All right, um, colleagues, any questions for Ms. Lipscomb? Uh, yes, yeah, could we hear briefly about the IPRO? All right. So someone here from procurement? Michael Jones should be on the line. All right. Hello, this is Michael Jones with the IPRO uh, team. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah, I was uh, I was report that we didn't have any uh, notable issues during the IPRO review. Uh, we did note that there was um, only a limited number of solicitations received for the solicitation or, pro or proposals received for the solicitation. But that was the only issue that we identified. There were no conflicts of interest that we identified. A five. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Um, pending other questions, I'll uh, move approval as amended. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Is there a second? Second, Matt's case. All right, thank you. Um, I know the IPRO report said there were less than three. So is that has that been a trend, do you know, for this particular um, service? This um, is Carla Lipson. It, it has been a trend. The last two solicitations, we only had start grinding the current contract. Hmm, okay. And they are performing well, I take it. Yes, ma'am. They are performing well. All right. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Uh, we can uh, open up the, the vote. I've indicated I wanted to speak. This is oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Ms. Um, so, one, I want to review this a little more. This uh, would probably be advisable for the administration to actually send this. Uh, this is going to be a personal paper to the council member where this facility is actually located. It's on the District 10. It's in District 9. Um, so one, I'd like to hear why that was done. And two, uh, I'd like to hear uh, from Mr. Keith Robinson about uh, the progress on the short-term and the long-term solutions um, to, one, mitigating the issues that are caused as this facility is located within about 150 feet of residential property, and two, um, does this contract is it location specific, or are these is this contractor going to be okay with moving this operation if and when it's relocated? Good morning, Council Members. This is uh, Interim Deputy Commissioner Keith Robinson. Um, uh, number one, um, in terms of the short term, um, obviously some of the things that we've done to the property was actually move the grinding to the front of the park property closer to James Jackson Parkway, which actually helped um, reduce some of the noise and some of the debris. Um, some of the other things that we're looking in terms
All right, uh, Mr. Robinson, thank you. Uh, just wanted to, um, you know, this remains a concern, but definitely wanted to uh, extend my thanks out to you because this has been an issue for many years um, before I was a council member. But even when I was a council member, um, honestly, you're the only person from the administration who's come out and um, looked at this and not just come out and looked at it, but actually put in solutions such as, as you mentioned, reducing those hours and, and moving the operation around to mitigate some of the issues. So much thanks. And I know the uh, residents there would, would say the same. So thanks again. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. I, I don't see any other speakers in the queue, so it's been moved and seconded. Um, you can go ahead and open the vote. The vote is open. Uh, Ms. Shepard, how do you vote? Uh, the vote is closed, and six shades and zero nays. All right, that sounds, I mean, that stands uh, approved next time. And it looks like we can take some items together uh, without objection. Please do that. Yes, ma'am. Item number three is 21R3215 a resolution by city utilities committee authorizing the mayor or her designee to execute amendment number one for agreement uh, number listed annual contract for water distribution system rehabilitation and improvements with reeves young llc and corporate environmental risk management llc a joint venture on behalf of the department of watershed management to add funding in an amount not to exceed two million dollars and zero cents all contracted work will be charged to and paid from the fund department organization and account number listed and for other purposes also with this item is number item number five 21 r 32 15 excuse me 32 17 a resolution by city utilities committee authorizing the mayor or her designee to execute amendment number one for agreement uh, number listed annual contract for water distribution system rehabilitation and improvements with rockdale pipeline inc Integral Municipal Services Corporation, a joint venture on behalf of the Department of Watershed Management to add funding in an amount not to exceed $9 million in zero cents. All contracted work will be charged to and pay from the fund department organization and account numbers listed. And also item number 13 on the agenda is the companion ordinance. That is 2100104, an ordinance by City Utilities Committee authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to amend the FY 2021 Water and Wastewater Renewal and Extension Fund budget in the amount of $11 million and zero cents to transfer funds from Watershed Reserve for appropriations and add funds to the water distribution system improvement projects and for other purposes. All right, thank you, Ms. Evans. Uh, Baron Boykin on the line. Yes, I'm, I'm here, Madam Chair. All right, please walk through these papers. Yes, um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, these are um, two resolutions that accompany uh, ordinance to add funding to uh, DWM's annual um, water distribution system rehabilitation and improvements project. Uh, to add the fiscal year, uh, the remaining fiscal year 21 funds to, to the project to continue with the system wide water distribution infrastructure rehab and improvements, including valve repairs, hydro repairs, main installation, main repairs, et cetera. Um, also, this funding will um, also um, replace the contract for the funds expended to help uh, during the May breaks during this most recent winter season. Uh, and also allow the department to continue um, with this replacement of um, approximately 20,000 linear feet of water base uh, that they've been doing uh, over the past 12 months. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, colleagues, any questions or I'll entertain a motion. Uh, yeah, ship will move through. Thank you. Second Boone. Thank you, Ms. Boone. 
All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, if there's no unreadiness, please and please open the vote for all three papers. Uh, the motion said, is it going to be three? It's because the, the, the ordinance is in a different section, just as the way the system you. works, we'll record it properly. Thank you very much. Mr. Hillis, how do you vote? The vote is closed at six yeas and zero nays. All right, the three papers stand approved the item. And then take all the papers. I think you're taking four and six together. Go ahead. Yes, Madam Chair. Item number four, 21R3216, a resolution by City Utilities Committee authorizing the mayor or her designee to execute one or more amendments for the agreement number listed, Green Infrastructure Design Challenge, West Manor Park with R2T, Inc. on behalf of the Department of Watershed Management to extend the term of the agreement from March 28, 2021 to a date no later than November 1, 2021 at no additional cost and for other purposes. Item number six, 21R3218, a resolution by City Utilities Committee authorizing the mayor or her designee to execute one or more amendments for the agreement number listed, Green Infrastructure Design Challenge Outdoor Activity Center with Volker Inc. on behalf of the Department of Watershed Management to extend the term of the agreement from March 28, 2021 to a date no later than November 1, 2021 at no additional cost and for other purposes. All right, thank you, Mr. Hill, Todd Hill. Good morning, Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, this is for uh, two of our green infrastructure design challenges, one at West Manor Park, which has received flooding over the years, and we're addressing those flooding concerns, as well as the outdoor activity center. Due to the COVID-19 restrictions, it's impacted the consultant's ability to conduct the community engagement as they had originally planned. And we're having to do a series of virtual uh, community engagements to make sure that we receive the proper amount of community engagement on these projects. And therefore, we're asking for an amendment to the contract to extend uh, the deadline at no cost no later than November 1st. That's approximately 216 days that we'll be extending these contracts. All right, thank you very much. Um, colleagues, any questions? I don't entertain a motion. Second, Boone. Second, Boone. All right, uh, if there's no other unreadiness, please open the vote. The vote is closed. It's six yeas and zero nays. All right, both items stand uh, approved. Next, item seven. Item number 721R3219, a resolution by City Utilities Committee authorizing the mayor or her designee to execute agreements for the uh, contract number listed, annual contract for major mechanical repairs and services with Western Summit Anatech Construction Joint Venture, um, annual contract for major mechanical repairs and services with WWPS SOL, a joint venture, and for major mechanical repairs and services with Lakeshore Engineering Contessa Construction JV to provide mechanical repairs and preventative maintenance services on behalf of the Department of Watershed Management in an amount not to exceed $2,963,000 $333.00 for each contract. All contracts, all contracted work will be charged to paid from the fund department organization and account number listed. There is also an IPRO in the committee packet for this. I move then to attach the IPRO. Second. All right, there's no unreadiness. Please open that vote. The vote is open. And the vote is closed. It's six yeas and zero nays. All right, the paper has been amended. Mr. Fletcher. Good morning again, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yep. I'm Quentin yes, Fletcher. 
Quince and Fletcher Department of Watershed Management. The purpose of this resolution is, is to enter into agreement for major mechanical repairs and services. This contract will be used to provide preventive and reactive maintenance to key mechanical assets throughout the drinking water and wastewater treatment facilities. This contract will also be used to address critical maintenance needs identified within the CIP capital maintenance project. Um, on behalf of the department, um, DOP advertised for proposals for RFP S 1200492, annual contract for major mechanical repairs and service. The Department of Procurement deemed three of the proposals responsive. All of the following um, vendors were evaluated, and the department decided to award the contract evenly to Western Summit, um, WWPS, and Lakeshore Engineering. Each of the three contractors have completed work and projects with the city in the past. All right. Thank you. Any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, approval, sure. Thank you. Uh, I'll second that. If there's no unreadiness, please open the vote. The vote is open. And the vote is closed. Six shays and zero nays. All right, that stands approved as amended. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you are welcome. Next, moving to section I held papers, we'll be removing uh, items 9 and item 13. Mr. Evans. Item number 9 is 20R4571, a resolution by City Utilities Committee authorizing the mayor or her designee to execute agreements for the contract listed architectural engineering design and construction management services for a series of these A, a through F. Uh, so with Atlanta Water Partners Joint Venture, a joint venture of Jacobs, no, excuse me, with Arcadis BPA Joint Venture, a joint venture of Arcadis US Inc. and Bendley Peters and Associates Inc with Atlanta Water Partners Joint Venture, a joint venture of Jacobs Project Management Company and Engineering Design Technologies, Inc. With CDM Smith Benchmark Joint Venture, a joint venture of CDM Smith, Inc. and Benchmark Management, LLC. With FWR Joint Venture, a joint venture of Fries and Nichols, Inc., Wade Trim, Inc., and Williams Russell and Johnson, Inc with H2R Joint Venture, a joint venture of Hazen and Sawyer PC and R2T Inc. with HDR Rohead Fox Joint Venture, a joint venture with HDR Engineering Inc. and Rohead Fox Construction Control Services Corporation to provide architectural engineering design and construction management services to the Department of Watershed Management on a task order basis for an initial term of three years with two one-year renewal options to add funding to a joint task order fund in an amount not to exceed $5 million in zero cents, contracted work shall be charged to and paid from the project and account number listed herein and for other purposes. There is an IPRO in the committee packet. I'll make a motion to amend to IPRO. I can ask All right, thanks. Uh, if there's no unreadiness, please open the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. It's six yeas and zero nays. All right. The paper as amended is before us. Uh, Commissioner Browning, please. Hey, good morning, Madam Chair and Council Members. Can you hear me? Good morning. Uh, this is Nikita Browning, Commissioner for the Department of Watershed Management. Uh, this legislation is to recommend the award of RFPS 1200-311-A through F, Architectural Engineer Design and CM Services with an initial $5 million allocation. The purpose of this, this solicitation is to retain qualified proponents to provide engineering planning, design, construction management, and related engineering technical support services in support of DWM's capital improvements program, as well as other related tasks to support the department in areas of compliance, 
operation and maintenance, digital transformation and innovation. The team will assist DWM in the implementation and completion of various tasks and projects on an as, need, as needed basis. Proposals were received from 13 joint ventures. The Department of Procurement deemed 10 responsive proponents and the evaluation panel recommended the contracts be awarded to six proponents. These contracts will have a base term of three years with two one-year renewal options for a total of five years. All right. Um, hold on one second. I can't see if anyone has any questions like me. Mr. Evers, is any colleague asking to be heard? I see no virtual hands raised, Madam Chair. <laughs> okay, that's good. All right. Uh, colleagues? Uh, anyone want to make a motion? So if there's no motion, it's still held. Is that correct? That, that would be how that works. Move approval, boom. Thanks. I see, Mr. Mr. Shook, did you second and want to speak? No, I'll, I'll wait for a second. Okay. Second, Shepard. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Shaw. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, unfortunately I would uh, give you a report, I guess, um, for Monday uh, because I'm, I'm going to abstain. I need to uh, just kind of more thoroughly sort through all this. It's, it's been held long enough that I really kind of need to go back and refresh myself. So I'll be abstaining. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shook. I was going to give myself a report because I was going to abstain too. So uh, we're fine. Uh, anyone else? Okay, Mr. Hilda. Yeah, thank you, Chair, Chair Narcadon. Um, I'll be abstaining as well. This has been held for quite a while. Um, it's been a while since I've looked at um, some of the issues with this uh, that have been brought to my attention. Uh, but if I recall, they're uh, quite concerning, and I think it would be wise uh, of this administration and this department to uh, seek to hold this or even file it. So I'll be abstaining. Um, I don't see anyone else in the speaker queue. So, um, Commissioner, did you want to speak to anything or you have said everything you need to say? Uh, Madam Chair, I think I've, you know, said everything I need to say regarding the basis of the solicitation and um, report to further feedback. Okay, yes, I'll be uh, talking to you um, between now and Monday to um, make sure that I can understand why we're moving forward. I know we need to do this, but I just want to make sure that I fully understand um, where we are and how we got here. So um, with that said, and there are no other speakers in the queue, um, please uh, open the vote. The vote is open. Mr. Mathekite, how do you vote? Voted to okay. abstain, Madam Chair. So there are. I see, sir. Go ahead. Two yeas, no, zero nays, and four abstentions. So All right, that forward. Next. Item number 13 was actually taken up with its companion resolutions, items number three and five on the agenda. So that concludes the, the legislative agenda. All right. Thank you very much, colleagues, for the good of the order. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that That's motion. Good. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Bye-bye.